into the world is what Real Safe the Foxhole now is. And we have to thank you and thank God for allowing you to find us as a podcast. With that said, this show has seen some success. And because of the success, it's going to force us to change. I am a solo creator, so I spend my time doing everything myself. And because of that, I need a couple months. So what's going to happen is the next two months, we're going to be playing some of the old episodes from Real Estate from the Foxhole during its current iteration, as well as when it was uh, the Oliver Perry show. So going into 2024 in February, specifically February 7th was when we'll launch the brand new episodes of Real Estate from the Foxhole. I want you to stay in the fight. Thank you again for making us the top 10% of the world. It's amazing. It's so dope to know there's people out there that are listening and hearing and learning. And we'll see you soon. This is a certified classic. I'm Oliver Perry. I'm here with a, uh, a brilliant man, a speaker, a coach, a mentor, and I'm going to let him get into the rest of this because the list is relatively long, <laughs> but his name is Diego. Diego, if you could please introduce yourself and give the people a little background story on you, I'd greatly appreciate it and we get into it. Yeah, for sure. So Diego Corzo, I, I live in Austin, Texas. I am a realtor. I, I've been a realtor for the past five years, six years now over here. And uh, I'm also a real estate investor. My little bit more of like my background is um, I am a dreamer and a DACA recipient. So what that basically means is that I came to the United States when I was a kid and we came here with a visa with my family. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we overstayed our visas, and that's when we became undocumented. So right, as of right now, I am undocumented, and I am what Congress calls a dreamer, which is somebody who came under the age of 16 back in the day. And, uh, and now after going through school and everything, they're, we're like in limbo right now because we don't know what where's our future we came here as kids and now we're adults so what's happening um and so so yeah so i i've had a lot of uh, i had a few obstacles throughout my life at uh at 15 found out that i couldn't legally get a drive like that i couldn't drive i couldn't get a driver's license at 18 found out that even though i was studying and getting good grades and everything i graduated 30 in my high school class I found out that I couldn't qualify for grants, student loans, financial aid, any of that, and uh, and some scholarships. And then at age 19, I also found out that I couldn't work as in the United States as an employee because I didn't have the right paperwork. Uh, of course, because I was an American, I didn't uh, I didn't have a few a few of the requirements, especially the work authorization. And uh, but in spite of that, I was able to through like a lot of hard work, found different, I became resourceful and I found out I was able to do different partnerships where I could create my own LLC. I was driving my bike everywhere. And uh, and then at age 22, while I was graduating college, graduating with two bachelor's degrees, uh, that's when the Obama administration passes the DACA program that allows me to finally, at the age of 22, be able to work and drive and uh and then yeah at that at that point i got a little bit of uh things evened out if i compare myself with my american friends and i was finally able to earn a living from 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 that perspective uh but i definitely learned a lot about like resourcefulness some like being my own like managing my finances because i didn't have much at that time and all of that stuff Mm -hmm. and then fast forward years later uh, I was able to get into real estate, buy my first house when I was 23, 24 years old. And right now my portfolio uh, is around 22, 23 doors around the United States. Uh, became financially free at age 26. Uh, so couldn't work or drive till age 22. By age 26, financially free and became a millionaire by 29. And I don't share that to like show off, but from the perspective that like, if I can do it with all the obstacles that I've had in my quest to achieve the American dream without being an American, I believe that anybody can do it with the right tools, with the right peer group, with the right action, and with the right uh, vision and goals, despite the current circumstances that people might have. Like, it's more like, hey, what are my excuses? Like, do I really, are my goals, 
bigger than the excuses that I've had, that the obstacles that I've had, and that's the mindset that I've been able to have throughout everything. So I, I was I was just about quiet just about the whole time up to the 20, 20 something uh, doors, and that's because I get excited about the doors part all the time. Um, I think I think it's really really interesting your story just in general, of course, but I really want to get into something the the mindset that it takes for you to go from a kid from another country coming to a new country not really speaking the language not understanding the culture all the time not getting a little you know small things and then somehow you get to the point where you've got 20 plus uh, units and you're a millionaire and you're doing all this what what was the mindset that got you from there to here and how can people implement that same mindset in their own lives yeah the mindset it, a lot has to do with like the mindset that and this is something that I that my dad like he he taught me he basically said when I was when we come when we came to the United States it's like look the United States is a land of opportunity but it is up to us to find it mm. and because of that I always knew that the opportunities that are, are out there I just because of the obstacles that I've had, I just had to work a little bit harder always than all of my friends. Uh, mm -hmm. But because I knew that they were out there, I just knew that it was a matter of time until I achieved them. I also got involved with uh, with the right peer group. I found myself at age 23 in a group of like 15 millionaires that I wasn't supposed to be in that room. And uh, and they allowed me to see in me surrounding myself with them that yeah. I could become the person that achieves financial freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Like I became that person and it wasn't until years later that whatever that meant, whether it was the net worth, the money, the whatever it was, that was coming to me years later. But first you have to become that person in your mind, in your heart, and then take actions and having the faith that it will happen to you, right? From that right. perspective, um, and that's something that a lot of people uh, may not may not have. And the one thing too that set me that I could say have set me apart is that like that strong why that I have that it's be that is because of everything that my parents have gone through. Um, sure, I came here as a kid and I had to learn a new language and all that stuff. And my parents left their home country, left their parents, left everything right. to come here and start from zero. And uh, my goal is to let them, like, show them that, hey, that sacrifice was definitely worth it. And that is the why of everything that I do. Wow. Okay. So being, yeah. being a dreamer and being mm -hmm. an immigrant and still going through the undocumented thing, do you feel part of your responsibility just as a person and as a man now is to educate others, particularly that are from that same kind of background and kind of help them push themselves forward? Yeah, I I feel like from that perspective, there's I've been fortunate enough because of the people that I've surrounded myself with and the support of my parents mm -hmm. that they've always taught me is like, dude, no matter what, like my 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 parents have always been like you can achieve whatever you want no matter what your circumstances are you just have to work hard for it like you just have to work the extra mile do do whatever work the extra hour um if you really want it hard enough right so my right. goal is to show them to show a lot of the dreamers that sure our life um, not to get political but our life since 2016 um, has been a roller coaster of the ups and downs but i've always had that mindset and this is something that i learned from tony robbins is that when you ask yourself why is the situation and happening for me rather than to me we get to have that empowered mentality and i feel like that is what has allowed me to um to be the person that i am today to take the actions that i've had the opportunity to take and uh, and to not let those circumstances those obstacles those challenges those unknowns of like hey will my paper expire and can i renew because every two years i renew my documents i have to give the government my biometrics my driver's license has to be renewed and all of that wow. stuff and i don't know if they're going to re be renewing them no. um so it's a lot of uncertainty but i've been able to always ask myself why is this happening for me 
And when I've taken that, it's more like I have a little bit more to lose from that perspective mm -hmm. than my American friends. So mm -hmm. it's sort of like a blessing in disguise. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but because of that, right, it's like, hey, why did you pursue passive income so fast or so much? Right. It's because, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to work or drive later, um, but mm -hmm. I can live off my passive income, right? right? Right. So it's sort of like, it's sort of a little bit from that perspective. And in the current administration, the Trump administration doing those things to putting the dreamers in, in an uncertainty, I was able to take advantage of that from the perspective that I share my story in social media. Mm -hmm. Um, and in doing so, because not many people knew, so I basically came out and I'm like, hey, I'm a dreamer. I'm one of those kids that came here. I took that road and I've been featured in Forbes, CNN Money. I've gone to Congress. I've given press conferences with congressmen, with mm -hmm. like, again, not to get political, but I was in the same stage with Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer. Um, so it's sort of like those various things that, um, that, it's sort of like I use that to my advantage to create my own opportunities instead right. of being that victim. I was like, how can I allow this to show people that if I can do it, they can do it too, whether you're American or undocumented, right? Like right. there's no excuses. And um, and yeah, so it's been a blessing in disguise from that perspective. Uh, but it's sort of like the mindset that I have needed to build, the mindset that I needed to create to achieve the life of my dreams. So I think I think exactly what you say, and like you said, not not being political at all, not necessarily a political show or anything to that effect. But what thing? One thing that I think people have to pay attention to is the fact that for your situation, the ground was ever shifting. So in that four year period, the ground shifted, right? The movement of where you were going. Okay, you had to change because now the the putt hole, if you will, if we're going to refer to golf, but the hole had moved over to the right, and you were headed to the left. So now you've got to figure out how to shift. But the fact that you figured out that shift and still moved forward in that is super impressive. And I think it's actually yeah. one, a testament to you as a person, two, a testament to not only did you have the mentality, but you built on the mentality. And I'm assuming because you, you quoted um, you quoted something that uh, Tony Robbins has said to you. And I know you've heard quite a few others say some different things, and I'm following that gold abundance path myself, so I'm, I'm learning from you as well as Jamie. But I wanted you, if you could talk about, you know, the things that you did to build on that, to build on that mentality, because it's not, sometimes it's not just us thinking, it has to be the action of reading or, you know, watching video or whatever it might be to feed that mentality. How did you go about feeding that mentality for yourself? Yeah, in feeding that mentality, I feel like a lot of it has to do with like scheduling. Num num number one is scheduling personal development, right? Okay. You have to schedule that into your life. Um, it is super important because a lot of people want that amazing life, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it comes with obstacles. It comes with challenges. It comes with a lot of naysayers. And that's why not many people achieve that. Whatever some people may think that life is great is because of so many because it's hard to get to the mountaintop from right. from that perspective if 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 you want to set up that example um but i feel like if you have the right peer group in place right mm -hmm. if you if you built on the right habits then it becomes easier to do because you have built those habits and for me Again, going back to like, for me, it's been building those habits of becoming like, when I joined Go Abundance, it was like I was in the emerge part, right? Where like my net worth was 25,000, mm -hmm. right? But by me surrounding myself with those people, with the guys in Go Abundance, I had already become a millionaire because I was taking the action of a millionaire. I had the mindset of a millionaire. I had like, I was taking the actions, the habits, I had all of that. So it was just a matter of time. Right. And so when, when you have that perspective, I feel like you just have to have the patience and the trust and take the actions to see the results. It's, it didn't come for me, it took me five, six years um, to let's say get that net worth. And at the end of the day, it's not that like, 
that life changing <laughs> from <laughs> from from that perspective. Right. Um, but it's definitely it builds on like it it just builds on becoming that person, right? And at the end of the day, I feel like the goal is not as important as who you became in achieving that goal. And for me, in becoming that person, it's more of like, what are the connections that I was able to build? Like, mm -hmm. like those are priceless. Right. What are my mentors now that can help me not just getting to that million, but helping me to get above and beyond to the, what are the things that now I can create impact on, right? And right. I have to say, then I'll just chime it down in these six different things that I've learned from the guys in GoBundance to become the person that achieves financial freedom by, by being sort of like a fly in the wall is number one, managing your finances, how, mm -hmm. how much is coming in, how much is coming out. Number two is scheduling the personal development. Number three is that peer group right? Like you have to understand the importance of the peer group that sets your standards. That, right. that, that's what set me apart. If I'm surrounding myself with millionaires, I'm either going to quit or I'm going to become a millionaire. It's as simple right. as that, right? So it's like, what are your standards? Number four is goal setting with accountability. Number five is that side hustle. And I used to be a software developer. While I was doing that, I got my license to be a realtor. So a realtor was my side hustle. And then number six, was which was which would help me was creating that passive income investing my money investing all of that stuff for the life that i wanted to have in the future so it's like those six things are what help my mindset um becoming that person having the right conversations that help me who i was be who i am today based on that journey right that's a uh, holy moly you just gave away gold diego <laughs> you just gave away gold. That's fantastic. So one thing you, I know you, and you talked about this a little bit earlier and just the influence and how it, everyone influenced you. And I imagine that is partly how you started on that path to real estate. Can you tell me, how did, how did you get from what you were doing and, you know, being a software developer and say, okay, you know what, I'm going to do realty and I'm about to own all these properties. How did that, how did that process come about and what, what got you past that first, that first fear level? Yeah, uh, for me, it was reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad at the age of 21. Ah, uh, the, the uh, investor's Bible. Got it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Everybody mentions that book, that it's Absolutely. probably in real estate. And it's just an understanding that there's two ways for people to make money. You can either trade your time for money or you can make your money work for you. So I knew that no matter what, I was going to live below my means mm -hmm. because I didn't like because of the fact that I didn't grow up with much. I didn't really need much, right, right, from that perspective. Like we never gave, we were never materialistic. When we came to the United States, we lived in a room and like in a bunk bed between my brother, my mom, like my brother, myself, my my mom and my dad. So mm -hmm. it's like, we came from zero so we can like, so I because of the fact that I know zero, I can always go up, right? right. And I didn't need much. So that allowed me to live below my means and be okay with doing that um knowing that and it's a quote that i follow by a guy named adam carroll who's like you should build a bigger life not a bigger lifestyle Ooh. right you should build a bigger life not a bigger lifestyle right. so for me it was always that life now fast forward years later now i'm getting a little bit more of that lifestyle right i just got a tesla and this other stuff but mm -hmm. um I did, even though I could afford it earlier, it wasn't my plan. Like it wasn't, it wasn't what I needed. It wasn't what right. I wanted because I wanted to have a bigger life, life based on experiences. I wanted to say, hey, I'm gonna go and travel to see my parents in Florida. I'm gonna go and see my friends some, some, somewhere else um, and have that as a yes, rather than, oh, I can't travel because I have to pay my, my downtown apartment or hey i just bought these like i'm in debt <laughs> i have this amazing furniture in my house right. and now i cannot travel no i did not want that i did not want that lifestyle i wanted more so i was living with roommates right like once i read rich that poor dad uh that was a thing that set me apart and then i was like i'm gonna live below my means mm -hmm. i'm gonna buy uh buy a home with low money down and I'm gonna live in the master and rent out the extra three rooms. I was making 60K at General Motors, so like I could afford a better 
a better lifestyle. I could live in downtown Austin or Rainy Street, whatever. Right. But I decided not to do that because I wanted to invest for my future because I wanted other people to pay for my living expenses. And at that point, being 24 years old, buying my first house hack allowed me to live for free and the extra rent payment was paying for my car. And because of the fact that I couldn't qualify for student loans because of my lack of papers, because of my lack of not being an American, I had to work my butt off to be able to pay for college, right? So I didn't graduate with student loans. So even though I was working with people at General Motors, my same age, they went to college, had 60,000 in student debt, and I had zero, um, it was a blessing in disguise looking at it later, but uh, it allowed me to basically have other, no credit card debt, no student debt, and my expenses were getting paid, my living were getting paid by other people. It gave me that freedom right. to later choose, okay, do I want to leave my job? Do I want to continue doing this? And that's where I built that number five that I was saying earlier, that side hustle. And uh, and having that side hustle is what allowed me to be like, okay, I can leave my job. If I can do what I'm doing part-time, I can do it full-time, probably double, and then going from there. And uh, and that's been a huge, a huge decision, right? And looking at always keeping my expenses low and mm-hmm. then just investing for passive income. Jesus, Diego. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, man. So let me let, and I wanted to go back a little bit. Let's talk because yeah. one thing I don't think I think we all you know. Of course, we know about the, the difficulties, but in your particular case, you've gotten so much from your difficulties. And I wanted to make sure that we talk about one thing with your celebration. When you went yeah. to go pick up that Tesla, what was that feeling like? Accomplishing that goal that you had set out to go for however long ago. Yeah. Um, so it didn't, I got the Tesla at the end mm. of the year mm. because it was number one, it was a tax. Like I wouldn't have gotten it yet if it wasn't going to be a tax deduction. Okay. And number two, so I, and because I'm a realtor, so I'm in the car all the time. So it's great to just do the double tap and then it drives itself for a little right. while. Um, <laughs> and uh, like which is, it. which is great. Right. But, and here's one thing that I have to say is that no matter what happens, if you cannot sleep well at night, if you're stressed out, if you cannot sleep well at night, the money doesn't matter. Mm. And I'll tell you a story okay. uh, that, they, that deals with the Tesla. So every two years, I have to renew my paperwork from immigration, my, my, my DACA documents. Sometimes they come on time, other times it doesn't come on time. If it doesn't come on time, it means that I lose my, I cannot renew my driver's license and I cannot, I lose my work authorization. But because I own my own company, it doesn't really matter. But I lose my driver's license, right? right? right. Which means that I cannot drive technically. Mm-hmm. And if mm-hmm. I, and if a cop stops me, if he wants to be an a hole, they can take me to immigration and I can get deported. Right. The, is very, the risk is low, but it can still happen. So I bought my Tesla on the 31st of 2020, the, the December 31st of 2020, and my DACA documents were expiring on the 2nd of January. Oh. So I was super nervous because if my, and I haven't gotten my documents yet. Like I have nothing at this point. And I got my Tesla and I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, this is great, but what's gonna happen in two or three days because I have nothing from immigration, I have nothing. On that Saturday, which was January 2nd, I went to check the mail and my documents were there. Okay. And at that point, that's when it hit me. Holy crap, I have a Tesla. I'm excited. I can drive it. Because I before, it. 
for those extra two days, mm. I didn't want to drive it anywhere because I was super nervous. I was like, holy crap, like I don't even want to think about the Tesla because I don't know if I'm going to be driving it. I right. don't know when I'm going to have the access to drive it. Um, like I didn't want to touch it for those two days. Like I had my, I, I was going to go to like a brewery and I asked right. one of my friends, I'm like, dude, my driver's license is expiring today. I'm nervous. I don't even want to drive anything. Can you pick me up? Right. Um, just because there's so much unknowns, right? Right, of and, course. Um, but yeah, so when you asked the question, like when you got your Tesla, how did you feel? Mm -hmm. I didn't feel anything. There was no excitement. There was nothing until two days later when I finally got my driver's license that I was like, oh, set in. holy crap, I have my license <laughs> and I have the Tesla. <laughs> I feel a relief from off my shoulders. And now I'm like, yes, this is awesome. Which brings it. me to the point that it doesn't really matter what you have if you cannot sleep well at night, right? At the end of the thing. And that's a lesson that I've learned from that it always reminds me every two years as I renew my document <laughs> right. uh, because it was one year that it took 30 days to get here and I had oh. to get resourceful into like who was driving me I had an mm -hmm. assistant that was driving me around I was mentoring some agents and like I told that agent dude you want to shadow me I'm going to take you to closings I'm going to take you to show homes but you're going to be my driver and he was like Love heck it. yeah right so it's right. sort of like okay, these are my obstacles, these are my things, uh, this is my situation, but how can I use this to like, to my advantage, right? Like I was able right. to mentor some other kids to, to help other people. Um, and even though I was nervous and all of that stuff, like some, some things of like uncertainty. Um, yeah, it's just my, 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 my life, right? But I am right. right now, I'm like super excited that I have the Tesla, it's a freaking awesome car. Uh, I got the Model 3 long range with full self-driving that's coming Wait, in the how, future. How long is long range? Because I want one one day too. How long is one, it's around long three, range? It's around 310, 310 okay, that's miles. Not that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. I could, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's pretty nice. I mean, it's, 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 it's a really nice car. And that was my first big splurge, if you want to mm -hmm. call it that. Mm -hmm. uh, and like my first big toy. But uh, but then again, I only bought it because it was a bit. I got to deduct right like eighteen thousand five hundred dollars, right. and <laughs> uh, money for the first year, right. and uh, it's a tax deduction for my S corporation, and uh, and then I also get to like to make my life easier as as I'm showing homes as a realtor, so so yeah, it's cool. I'm happy now. <laughs> I, <laughs> I imagine. I imagine. I've always wondered if you got pulled over in a Tesla and it's driving yourself. Itself, can you say to the hey officer, I wasn't. It wasn't me. I'm. I'm not driving. I'm just right here. I'm right? not. You know. I'm not touching anything. Um, yeah. That's interesting. But um. So, what's really fascinating, and I don't. I don't know if people even ask you this, but you have a very, a very particular skill when it comes to analyzing a situation and figuring out what got went wrong and your lesson from it. Like you do renewing your license and going through the whole DACA docs and all that stuff. I, when you were telling a story, I wasn't thinking nothing about that, but somehow you just, you figured out that puzzle that was in there. And then that, like it comes to wish like you said, two days later, that okay, you know, I finally hit, I finally hit, quote unquote, where I was trying to go, the big time, if you will, and you, then you get excited. How are you figuring out those lessons for yourself? Like when you go through something bad, at what point are you reflecting? And when you're reflecting, what are you doing to dissect what that lesson is in life? Yeah, it usually comes when I'm on podcasts like this. Like this mm -hmm. is the first time that I've shared that. Uh, <laughs> of course, I just got it like two, two, two weeks ago. Um, oh man. But um, but no, I mean, at, at the end of the day, it comes from like, look, um, and when I share these obstacles mm -hmm. um, with or like the challenge, and not that my life is full of obstacles. I mean, I've had obstacles and I have great things that are happening for me 100%. Right. Uh, but it's funny because when I share this with my brother, his perspective is always like, dude, that's an extra chapter for your book. Your book is going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right? I like, love it. Right. Those are the things that my brother says. He's like, dude, look at it as another chapter for 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 your book. Um, and um, yeah, so I mean, 
it's looking at what are the lessons that no matter, and it's not like I'm looking at that while I'm going through it, right? but it's more with what are the things that looking back, what are the tips or the things that I can, the things that I learned from that situation. Right. Um, and always, I always have, um, have a quote uh, in the back of my head from uh, Hal Elrod, and he shares that he, I, I heard him say this in 2014 in one of his podcast episodes, um, be happy with the life that you have as you pursue the life of your dreams, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people are not, like they always think that they're gonna be happy when they reach the top of the mountain, when they reach their goal. Right. And right. I realized that similar to how what Hal Elrod says, like happiness is a choice. So you have to be happy with the life that you have as you're growing, right? That's why it's like, sure, you can, like a lot of people are like, hey, when are you gonna be happy? Like, right. are you gonna be happy? Like, why are you always pursuing, pursuing something, pursuing something? And it's like, I'm happy with what I have and I am content, but I don't wanna be complacent because I wanna keep on growing. Right. Right? Wow. So it's like, what are the things it's like, I am, I choose to be happy no matter what my situations are, but I'm always, pursuing something bigger than myself, pursuing something bigger, pursuing my goals. Um, and I think that's the mindset that has allowed me to to continue, um, have a positive mindset, uh, mm -hmm. despite the current circumstances that I face. Jesus, Diego, so good, so good. All right, let's, <laughs> let's, get, off, let's get off the personal stuff. I yes. wanna ask you some work-related questions, particularly when it comes to real estate, because I want people to understand that it is possible and there's steps you can take to, to go about in succeeding in real estate and, and getting after your goal. In that yeah. vein, I wanted to talk about your just your experience, because you, you started as a realtor and then you made that transition to investing. What was your first deal like? How did you go through, what was that process like? Um, my first deal, so I'll, I'll share about my first house hack. So the first deal was a little bit challenging uh, mm. from the, and it was a very, very unique situation. Uh, it wasn't my first house hack, but my, but my first deal, I wanted to buy a home and uh, I was under contract to buy a house that I wanted to live with roommates and the deal fell through because the lender said, I already told the lender that I'm a DACA recipient, I don't have a green card. And he's like, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, we'll get you qualified two weeks before closing. He's like, hey, we need your green card. And I'm like, I already told you I don't have it. So we had to terminate a contract. And at that point I was like, holy crap, I'm not gonna be able to buy homes. I read Rich That Poor That. My goal was to have 10 properties by the age of 35. I called my dad and I'm like, listen, like, what do I do? Like I'm hitting this other <laughs> obstacle. I cannot right. buy a freaking house anymore. Right. Uh, in Austin, Texas, I was living in Austin at that time, or like by that time. And my dad says, look, how much, like, why don't we buy a house cash here in Florida and you put 50%, I'll put 50% and that can be an investment property and at least we help each other out. Right. I was like, cool. So we bought a property in Florida for 60K. I had 25,000 saved at that time. And then my dad put the other 25 and then I borrowed 10 grand from a buddy of mine. And uh, so that was my first deal. I, we had to buy it cash and, uh, and then my dad just bought me out of it last year uh, and he gave me 50K. So that 25K that I bought it a, years ago, uh, plus the passive income and all that stuff, I was mm -hmm. able to get 50K and he he bought me out because he was like, dude, at the end of the day, you're, this is gonna be your house anyway. Just mm -hmm. let me have the cash flow. Let me give you this. And I was like, all right, perfect. <laughs> um, so that was my first deal. But the deal that I really like is my first house hack because I feel like at that point, that was where the one that I lived in, that mm -hmm. was the one that I use a strategy house hacking, which I like to share about that because I feel like it can be life changing for many people. Absolutely. Because a lot of people think that they need 40,000, 50,000 to buy a home. And that's not true if you're gonna be living in it. So I was able to buy a home with $8,000 and uh, and live for free. 
and that home that I bought here in Austin, Texas for 170 mm-hmm. is now worth around 290. Of course, mm-hmm. crazy appreciation right now in Austin. Right. Um, but imagine for $8,000, I was living for free. So in a matter of a year, I got all my money back from that. Per- like, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like a home run, right? Right. Yeah, um, and then I just replicated that again and again and again, putting low money down in a few properties. Mm-hmm. I moved out of that one, rented, put somebody in the master, and then live for free in the second one and then kept my first one in cash flow. And that's how I grew my portfolio at that time. And now I have other properties. I have other businesses now too. Mm-hmm. Um, so, 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 so yeah. So even though I'm a realtor and I'm a real estate investor, I also run like, I also have like two or three other businesses right now. So let's talk about the other, the, the other two. Oh, can you talk about the other two or three businesses? Yeah, for sure. Okay, fantastic. Let's, let's go into that because what's what is a part of like you said part of what people don't realize is a lot of millionaires of course have different streams of income in emerge we talk about the horizontal income lining that income up so that you've got other things happening other spaces and more, normally from the people that I've I've seen so far that are in the emerge program and in go abundance it's always separate it's not necessarily all real estate there might be somebody in the cannabis industry He's got a clothing he's invested in or something like that. So with yeah. you being the boss of real estate, uh, being the boss realtor and being the boss of these other two com- com- companies, how are, you, how are you doing that? How did you, how are you even juggling that? That's a lot to juggle. Yeah, it is a lot to juggle. Um, and um, yeah, so the businesses are, uh, so I have a mastermind group Okay. called rat rates to fi okay. where we help people get their first property like we help them it's usually like somebody that's looking to buy their first rental mm-hmm. uh and then we or their first or second rental and we teach them all about that um so that's the one thing then we have a then i created a drop shipping company with a okay. partner okay. and so now we're wholesaling we sell products from home depot to Amazon. And as of today, (laughs) we are launching a Walmart automation thing where we're gonna be selling products from Amazon to Walmart, uh, the Walmart store. (laughs) Um, And then because of the following that Mm -hmm. my buddy Felipe and the mentor that's teaching us how to do that, his name Mm -hmm. is Christian. Um, Because of that and using the power of social media, like. Understanding the power of social media is insane. Like right. building your personal brand because you can create so many different things from it. Um, and this is something that I'm learning, of mm-hmm. course, mm-hmm. Uh, but this is something that I wanna capitalize on. Um, so yeah, so we have drop shipping companies. Um, the profit is only 10 to 12%. It's nothing sexy, like it's nothing crazy. But we've been able to automate that with a VA and all of that right. stuff. Right. Um, and then we are also teaching people on how to do that. So that created another stream of income in teaching people. Uh, and then the other one that we're creating right now is a credit repair company. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, so helping people get get like increasing their credit um, so that they can invest in real estate. At the end of the day, it's helping people get started investing in real estate, right? right because right. when people come and they're like, dude, Diego, I want to buy a home, but my credit sucks. Great. I have a credit repair company that can help you. Diego, I don't have money to save for my down payment. Dude, you need a side hustle. You right. can do Uber, you can leverage your skill, or if you want to try this drop shipping business, you can hustle, you can make it happen it will be a side hustle. And then if they want to learn how to invest in real estate, we have mm-hmm. the mastermind if they want to, if they like, cause we also do IG lives and all of that stuff, right? right? So it's like, like we are helping them get every step of the way. We have something for the people if they want to get started. Now, what's great about this too, is that it's been because of my story in me sharing my story on bigger pockets on, I've given a TEDx talk um, and a few other things. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that are underserved or that may not have somebody to identify with, uh, the minority, 
Uh, there's not that many minorities that are sharing their story on podcasts and stuff like that. They get to identify themselves with somebody like me, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So then they go, holy crap, Diego, I've been listening to Bigger Pockets for years and you are the first DACA recipient like myself that's sharing their story and I identify with you and if you can do it, I can do it. And I'm like, heck yes, right? At the end of the day, it's sort of like, (laughs) When Love people it. identify with your story, right. I believe that people's stories are powerful. No matter what your story is, if you just share enough of it, other people will relate to it. And then if you can help them out, if you can create an impact in their lives, then that's Absolutely. amazing, right? So it's Absolutely. sort of like leveraging that in creating, uh, in me sharing my story more and more is giving me the opportunity to help people more and more. I am speechless. Um, I'm looking. <laughs> I'm trying You're to find the words this, to say. Right, so I can create I'm, like snippets of this yeah, video. Yes, like, this is great. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. I'll make sure you're able to too. Um, I'll have to rasterize it and do all the other stuff, and I'll send it to you. But yeah, we can definitely do that. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I've always enjoyed just talking to you and hear you talk. Just logging on to Dawn with Diego. Oh, for those listening, now it's gotten personal again. I'm talking about what I've enjoyed. I'm a little bit selfish right now. Uh, but I, <laughs> I love being able to hear that stuff from you and just knowing that, you know, it can be done, it, it, that anybody can do it. It's just a matter of making that determination and going to do that. And with that in mind, to get back into the podcast, we'll go ahead and start to close it out. I did want to do something we call Troop to Task. And what Troop to Task is, is you give the audience, the listener, one thing that they can do right now to improve to that next step forward? One thing that they can do Mm -hmm. is write down their goals. Like they need to understand what is that they want to achieve Mm -hmm. and the why that is gonna help them get there. I will like, no, 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 let's back out. Okay. They have to know I feel like everybody wants a great life, but I feel like the step number one is to understand why do you really want it? That's number Mm. one. Okay. Why do you really want it? And ask yourself seven times why. I'll leave Mm, it at that. Okay, yeah. When you write down your why, the first why, ask yourself why do you want that seven times? Five times, seven times. And you will get to the real why. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a, I did that exercise. That was painful. I got yeah. <laughs> I got to tell you it was painful cuz you keep asking yourself why. You're like, "Okay, I want to do this cuz this. Why? Okay, I want to do it cuz of this. Why?" And I'm like, "Man, this is way deeper than I wanted to go." But it's it's value added because at the end you know exactly truly that true reason and then you're not BSing yourself anymore. Um now with that done, I wanted to do something we call situational awareness as well. Situational awareness is basically you give them something that they can read or something that they can listen to that will help them um, like just grow along the path of real estate, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say something that they can do, that they can read will be, because a lot of people that are probably watching this Mm -hmm. Uh, they're already somewhat in real estate or they want to invest in real estate. So they have already read Rich Dad Poor Dad, they've already listened to Bigger Pockets, whatever. So my action item from that perspective, my recommendation would Mm -hmm. be to read the book, The E-Myth by Michael Michael Gerber. Oh, that's a good one. I've got that on my list. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I've got that on my list. That's a really good one. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, Diego, um, where can they reach out to you, get in touch with you, or even take part in some of the mastermind stuff you've got going on? Yeah, um, they can reach out. So Instagram, they can follow me, Real Diego Corzo. So it'll be at Real Diego Corzo on, on IG. That's the best place. And then also just on Emerge, like I'm a big, like I've been part of GoBundance for the last six years, mm-hmm. five years, no, since 2014. And I'm a big believer in what Emerge has going on. And this is my way to give back, like doing the done with Diego. And I'm, I'm, I'm active there in the group too. So they can reach out to me in the group. 
If you want to get a hold of me, my name is The Oliver Perry at The Oliver Perry on IG. You can also find me on YouTube at The Oliver Perry Show or on TikTok at The Oliver Perry 38 and also on LinkedIn, just Oliver Perry there.